What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Here we go again. Another breakdown coming at you guys. All right. This is a CP passage. So the chemistry slash phys section of the MCAT. All right. I'm going to show you guys where to highlight, how to interpret figures, how to interpret all this, make all this make sense, how to get every single question right. Okay. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that in the least amount of time possible so that you do not waste too much time during these sections. So you do not have a timing issue okay before i do that as always guys go ahead and do the passage on your own first and then hear me break it down okay so pause it whenever you need to read through this passage okay answer the question here is the first question second question third question fourth question and the last question so pause it whenever you need to guys do it on your own first and hopefully you got all of them right Hopefully, you know, if you got some wrong, we're going to see where you messed up on. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric. I'm on a mission to make sure this MCAT is as easy as possible for you guys. Because I know what it's like to be pre-med. You have a lot going on. All right, enough said. Let's begin. Crack the neck. Let's do this. Lock in. Acetaminophen is one of the most commonly used drugs in the United States. It inhibits both isoforms of the cyclooxygenase enzyme COX-1 and COX-2 and is used primarily for its analgesic and antipyretic properties. In massive overdose, oh, I'm not highlighting anything here. I already know this, okay? If you did not know that it inhibits COX-1 or COX-2, you could highlight it, all right? Highlight things that stick out at you. Highlight things so your brain could have a mental reminder of what's important in the passage okay so in massive overdoses acetaminophen can cause fulminant hepatitis as well as necrosis of hepatocytes so i'm going to highlight this because i didn't know it can cause fulminant hepatitis and necrosis of hepatocytes okay with normal dosing however most of the drug undergoes direct glucoordination and sulfation reactions all right i didn't know that so i'm going to highlight it now that I highlighted it and paid attention and looked really closely and read every single word, now that I did that, my brain remembers, hey, the drug undergoes direct glucoordination and sulfation reactions, okay, which produce metabolites that can be excreted in the urine. Approximately 10% of acetaminophen is oxidized by P450 isoenzymes, 2E1 and 1A2. These isoenzymes, okay, guys, they oxidize 10% of acetaminophen, all right? In hepatocytes to form N-acetylbenzoquinone imine, so they form NAPQI. Once generated, NAPQI can bind vital proteins in the cell, leading to cell death, all right? So NAPQI leads to cell death. NAPQI is bad. I would write that real quick in my notebook, okay, because I'm encountering a lot of details when you encounter a lot of details it's okay to go and write real quick bam and a p q u equals uh bad okay why is that bad well because it's gonna these are going to cause cell death it's not good alternatively n a p q one can bond to glutathione gsh to form a mercuptic acid another stable metabolite excreted in the urine okay cool and this is the Figure one, all right, we don't look at the figures, only look at figures when the passage tells us to. Not the passage, the question. Only look at figures when the question tells you to, all right? Don't want to waste time doing that. When, gluth when glutathione in the cell is depleted, however, NAPQ1 forms additional toxic protein adducts. Oh, no, accelerating the rate of cell death. All right, so I'm going to write real quick here. A decrease in GSH is also bad, right? We need GSH to be high. One common cause of GSH depletion is chronic alcohol consumption, which not only induces the action of CYP2E1, but also utilizes GSH as shown in figure two. Though glutathione reductase can convert glutathione disulfide back into GSH, the rate at which it does so may be insufficient to keep up with the rate of acetaminophen metabolism. Okay, what else am I going to write? 
what was I going to write? I'm going to write that the CYP2E1, so CYP2E1, an increase in CYP2E1, it uses up the GSH, and that's bad. Okay. Also, reductase is good. Reductase will help us make more GSH. We cannot have this GSH low. We cannot have that. Here's figure two. Let's keep going. Only look at the figures when the question asks for. Let's keep going. Acetaminophen is commonly administered through three different routes, intravenous, oral, and rectal. Figure three indicates how the bioavailability and rate of absorption of the drug differs for the three routes over time. Pretty simple paragraph here. Okay, they just did three different routes, and that's the information regarding, you know, the results regarding those three different routes. So I don't have to look at that. I only look at it when the question asks for it. Pretty good passage. Very simple, guys. The MCAT is an easy exam, okay? The MCAT is easy because you're doing the right things. Based on information provided in the passage, which of the following statements describes a result of administration of acetaminophen to a patient with a history of chronic alcohol consumption. Well, remember, guys, since I highlighted thoroughly, okay, the chronic alcohol consumption, okay, it induces CYP2E1, which utilizes GSH. Okay, so chronic alcohol consumption reduces um, GSH. Okay, look at the little note we made. Low GSH from chronic alcohol consumption. Okay, I could have highlighted this, my fault, but... That's what happens, okay? So we're going to have a decrease in GSH, and we're going to have an increase in NAPQ1. All right, we're going to have an increase in NAPQ1 because NAPQ1 is bad. It's bad, all right? NAPQ1 also uses up the GSH, okay? It uses up GSH. So what we're going to have, guys, increase in NAPQ1 and decrease in GSH. All right, so A, it's not this one. Oh, you have plasma versus hepatocyte, same thing. Obviously, it's going to be hepatocyte, okay? They talked more about the hepatocyte. This all happens in the hepatocytes, okay? So answer to 30 is C. Which of the following is not a mechanism of action for the metabolism of acetaminophen? Well, guys, since I highlighted where I needed to, I know that... The drug undergoes glucoordination, sulfonation, so I can eliminate those right away. But bam, but bam, oxidation or acetylation. All right, I'm gonna have to look at this figure here to look at what's going on here. Well, we have an H and an N becomes an N. All right, and then these get added here. Okay, so. We're losing a hydrogen. We're getting a double bond here. This is an oxidation step, okay? We're losing electrons here. So we are doing oxidation. They're asking for not a mechanism. So I'm gonna go with acetylation because I don't see any addition of acetyl groups going from here to here. I don't see it at all. Nope, no addition of acetyl groups. Therefore, the answer is C. Let's keep going. Which of the following offers the most likely explanation for the substantially higher peak plasma concentration of acetaminophen following IV administration when compared to oral and rectal routes? Okay, so if we look over here, dark line, IV, bam, oral, smaller, rectal, smallest, okay? Why do, they, why do you guys think that they administer IV drugs and not pills? Okay, why do they think they do it through an IV? Well, they do it through an IV to bypass the liver. Okay, if you bypass the liver, all right, if you skip the liver, that's what it's called. If you skip the liver, then the liver is not going to be able to, you know, break down all these drugs. And if the liver doesn't break down all these drugs, you're going to get a higher dose. Okay, you're going to get more seminophen in the blood. All right. A, the drug is poorly absorbed through mucous membranes in the oral cavity and rectum. No. Okay, in the oral cavity, you take the pill orally, and that pill is going to go to your stomach. And then from there, it gets digested, goes to your liver, and then that goes to your bloodstream. Okay. A substantial portion of the drug is excreted in the feces before it can be absorbed. No. No. Much of the drug is broken down in the digestive tract prior to absorption. 
Mm, yeah. The liver breaks down a large portion of the drug before it reaches the systemic circulation after oral or rectal administration. Yeah, this is correct. Okay. You guys should know the pathway. I'll draw it out real quick. Okay. Here is you. This is you here. This is you. All right. Here's a pill. This is pretty important. Take the pill. It goes in your mouth. All right. Is your mouth. It's going down your esophagus. Goes to your stomach here. All right. Is your stomach. All right. After your stomach, it goes to where? It goes to your small intestine. All right. In your small intestine, you have various uh, villi. You have villi here. And then on these villi, you have microvilli. Okay. The pill is then going to go diffuse through here and enter your bloodstream. And it enters the what? It enters the hepatic portal vein. All right. HPV. <laughs> HPV. All right. Well, I'm going to call it HPV. Okay. The hepatic portal vein. And after that, it goes where? It goes to the liver. And then the liver, you know, it checks all this blood coming. All the blood entering the liver is full of nutrients. It's full of drugs, whatever you took, okay? And the liver then filters all this, breaks it down. You know, let's say if the pill coming into the liver was like 90% full of acetaminophen, and now you're going to be left with like, I don't know, like 40% or something. All right, the liver breaks all that down. And then when it leaves the liver and then travels up to your body all the way and that empties into your heart okay it empties into your if you're vena cava and then your uh, right atrium and then your right ventricle blah blah pulmonary circuit yeah you already know how it goes so this pathway also explains why there's a lot of fat in the heart okay you have a lot of fat in the heart because you have all these fats coming in here Okay, all the fat gets absorbed here and then it goes through all these. It goes through lacteals. It doesn't go through here, it goes through lacteals and then it gets dumped into the heart. Okay, so this makes sense. Answer is D. N acetylcysteine is often administrated for the treatment of acetaminophen overdose to help prevent the toxic metabolite NAPQ1 from accumulating in hepatocytes. This is most likely because NAC. Increases the production of NAPQ. No, okay. We want to decrease the amount of NAPQ1, not increase it. That's a toxin. Axis inhibitor for gluathionine reductase. No, okay. Glu gluathionine reductase helps us. Okay, it makes back the GSH. It brings back the GSH levels. Okay, we need GSH. When we run out of GSH, bad things happen. All right, remember. Bad, low GSH, bad. Axis stimulate the action of CYP1A2. This is also wrong, okay? CYP2, all right, remember it, the activity goes up, it's going to decrease the GSH. All right, even though this is CYP2E1, I remember they talked about the isoforms. All right, you could have E1 or A2, so same thing. All right, we're, we want to inhibit this. Possess a sterically unhindered functional group equivalent to glutathione. That could work. That could work. I and mean, that's the only thing that makes sense out of all these. So the answer is D. Remember, if you have any questions, just comment down below. I'll be more than happy to explain everything a little further. Okay, I want you guys to do well. Besides detoxification of drugs such as acetaminophen, the liver is involved in and regulates several different biochemical pathways which of the following is not a biochemical activity of the liver easy question i'm guys so easy regulation of carbohydrate metabolism obviously it does that the liver it does that i don't have to explain that production of lipases and bile for fat digestion i don't know if it produces lipases it does produce bile Let's keep going. Deamination of amino acid. Yeah, it does that. Okay, it does that, the liver. Lipid metabolism, including cholesterol and lipoprotein synthesis. Yes, okay, it does metabolize cholesterol. All right, you should know this pathway as well. All right, let's say this is your liver. I'm going to go real quick, okay? Let's say it's your liver. Um, after your stomach, the enterocyte. Okay, remember how I was talking about 
um, the pathway of blood, yada, yada. All right, basically, you're going to have the chylomicron, chylomicron, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the chylomicron that enters the liver, okay, it's going to be broken down into a VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. That's going to go do its thing and come back, and then the liver is going to break it down into a LDL, low density lipoprotein. So these lipoproteins, okay, the whole structure of them, they have cholesterol in them. So you're basically metabolizing cholesterol, okay? So I like B. I don't think the liver produces lipases. I'm pretty sure the pancreas produces the lipases. I don't remember hearing about liver lipase. So I'm going to go with B. All right, and that is it, guys. That's how you get all of them correct. And I am confident that they're all correct. Let's see. All right, well, we got 30. C, correct. 31. C, correct. 32. D, correct. 33. D, okay. 34. That's how you do it, guys. It's exactly how you do it. If you are interested in working one on one with me inside MCAT University, okay, guys, it is a fully loaded program to hit your MCAT target score. It is absolutely proven to hit your target score, okay? In there, in MCAT University, you have access to me in case you have any questions at all at any time, all right? In there, in MCAT University, I literally show you how to hit your target score in half the time, okay? You don't, you don't want to take the MCAT more than once, okay? You want to take it once. You don't want to waste your time. So I show you how to do it in half the time. Also, many people are hitting their target score in there, okay? Many people are going to hit their target score. I promise you that. I've done it before with other pre and this is just an accumulation of two years worth of teaching for the MCAT, all right? So it's proven to your target score, half the time doing it. And it's very easy. Just do what goes on. Like do what the, I'm sorry, <clears throat> do what they tell you to do in MCAT University. It's laid out. Everything is laid out. All you have to do is just follow, just follow the proven process. That's it. That is it. Okay. You will hit that 132, 131, whatever your target score is, whatever you dream of your target score to be, you will hit that and you will go to med school. Okay, promise you. So if you're interested in that, click on the link. Click on the link in the comment section. All right, after you're done clicking it, you're going to fill out the application. After you fill out the application, you're going to book a call. This call is an interview for MK University. If it seems like we're a good fit, then that's when I ask you to join. And then you hit your target score. So I'll see you guys in the next video.